Welcome guys, this is Olaf from Stop Me Our Channel. I hope your Christmas went well. Thanks so much for all these wishes that you provided in the comment section underneath my Merry Christmas video. I really recorded that just for the sake of it, because I really wanted to wish you a Merry Christmas, but you gave me a pretty nice response. Pretty much all of you stated the country that you're from. I mean, I didn't really ask, but it's very cool. It made me happier. And so many of you are from so many different areas in the world. There's m plenty of you from Brazil, uh, plenty of you from all around Europe, obviously. Um, so Portugal, France, Italy, Finland, uh, Russia, many of you from Denmark as well. Obviously from my homeland, so Poland. Uh, Pozdravim. There was even one person that stated that he or she is from Oregon and I was like, whoa. <laughs> also my last video uh, about episode three video, um, it's, it's, it's quite popular right now. Look, many of you joined me after that. So I usually say it at the end of my video, but you can find me on various social media as well. The links are in the description. So Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram and Tumblr as well. Remember to subscribe and leave a like. It really means a lot to me. It's motivating me. It's giving me a reason to keep on working and keep up the level that I'm providing at the moment. Because I really wouldn't want to go anywhere below that level. Well, I hope you enjoyed your gifts as well. I don't know if there's many Game of Thrones fans among you. I'm a huge Game of Thrones fan, so basically this is what I got as well. Also, I got a Logitech C922 uh, webcam, so I'm going to use it for my playthroughs, which makes me very happy because the quality is going to improve. What I really want to discuss today is Rachel Amber. There's so many people saying so many different things about her. People claim that she's manipulative, that she was cheating on Chloe, that she was lying to Chloe, maybe even all the time. And some people go as far as stating that she was already in a relationship with Frank during before the storm events. That's not the case at all. They obviously never met. But I think the answer about Rachel is hidden within the very game. First scene of this game, of episode 3 actually, first scene where we see James Amber and Rose Amber telling Chloe and Rachel about Sarah. This scene was amazing. I loved it. It reminded me of Harry Potter's tale of three brothers, the way it was handled, you know, darkness all around and just going through certain phases of their relationship and life together. I loved it a lot. It was obvious that there was this analogy uh, between Sarah and Rachel. The way that James was trying to indicate that Rachel is just like Sarah. I mean, he said that Sarah always wanted to run away. She was looking for escape. And we obviously know that Rachel always wanted to run away. She was driven by the thought of getting away from Arcadia Bay. That goes without saying. Let's leave. For real. For real, huh? You said you wanted to skip town and never look back. Like I said last night, let's do it. <laughs> I know. I've been thinking about that all day. Rachel is quite a popular girl. Like Chloe couldn't even believe that Rachel wanted to hang out with her. And Sarah, as James stated, she was special. Like everyone, everyone wanted to be with her, hang out with her. Um, every boy wanted to date her. When I was in high school, there was one person everyone adored. She was filled with passion. She was full of life, just like Rachel. That is until she died, obviously. <laughs> so sorry. And it seems like they were both into acting as well a bit. Like you can see, uh, there's this small detail. It's Mask's necklace. Sarah's wearing this mask necklace. And you can see Mask's in Rachel's room. It's indicating that they're both acting in a way. And I love that analogy. It was very nicely done. But the thing is, it was suggesting that Sarah was not a good person. That's what James said. He said that he was blinded by her. Being blind, it, it was a motive that reoccurred during the game. So we could see Chloe being told by William to be careful because of the fire. And we know that Rachel was fire. Fire was driven by her emotions. When Rachel was unconscious in the hospital, the big fire stopped, as the fireman stated in the, co in the corridor. It's been sort of indicated that Chloe needs to be careful with Rachel. That's why you need to be careful. But the thing is, based on that story, on James's story, we find out at the end of the game that James was basically lying. Sarah was not a bad person. 
she got lost. Being lost, um, being on drugs, getting addicted to anything, it's a weakness, but it doesn't mean that we're bad people. I mean, I think the easiest thing that we can do is judge someone. That's the easiest way out of every situation. But trying to understand someone, trying to walk in someone else's shoes, that's another level. So James was lying. Sarah was not a bad person. She got lost, but it doesn't mean that she's a bad person. And then Rachel. Uh, I strongly believe that Rachel is far from being a bad person. Very far. She is a manipulator in parts. I believe that she tends to manipulate people to get what she wants. Like, I don't know, a role in the play. She's acting pretty much often. Maybe even all the time. But I do believe she was never acting with Chloe. I think Chloe was the one person that allowed Rachel to be who she is. There's so many people in life a strange uh, game group stating that Rachel is bad, evil, Rachel cheated on Chloe, Rachel lied to Chloe, Rachel loved Frank, Rachel loved Jefferson, all that stuff. When we don't really know. Sure, we've seen some photos from Frank Savi, we've seen some letters, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's all true. You only get a piece of someone else's life in that period. Do you really consider that it's already enough to judge? someone else no it's not basically what i think happened after before the storm rachel obviously got involved with drugs regardless of the choice that we made like if you decide to not tell rachel about her mother then she ends up believing that her mother never cared for her this is someone that can trigger the drug addiction as well and all that she knew about her mother was that she was a drug addict so you can see there's a correlation there if you pick to tell Rachel about it, then she can get involved with the drugs deal because she thought that, or she knew that her father was lying to her all this time. But at least she knew that her mother was a good person and that she tried to fight the addiction and that she really cared for her daughter and she wanted to meet her. It's just that James was lying. James was stopping her from doing so. James was even trying to pay her off to stop her from contacting Rachel. It's just that Sarah refused to take the money at some point. Both these events could trigger Rachel's addiction. And if Rachel got involved with drugs, and I mean serious drugs, not like occasionally smoking weed or something, that it's quite serious. I think she knew that Chloe would not and could not follow her down that road. Chloe is the type of person that could smoke weed and stuff like that, but I don't think she'd go seriously into drugs. She's too smart to do it. I'm not saying that Rachel is not smart enough. She just got lost and she always was looking for something else other than she had in her life. What I'm saying is just let's not judge Rachel because we don't know. Let's not judge anyone unless we can put ourselves in their shoes and see what from their point of view. It's very important these days, not just in the game, but overall. When it comes to Frank, I don't think there was actual romantic involvement there. I think that Rachel was hanging out with Frank because she knew that Frank was an easy person to get along with. He had drugs, obviously. Uh, he was easy and fun to be around. I'm sure there was some sort of romantic teasing involved, but I think that Rachel still cared for Chloe at this point. I mean, even Frank said that he felt threatened by Chloe. He said that in life is strange. So if he did feel threatened, I believe that anytime we feel threatened by someone, because we, we know that he or she is an actual threat. As Frank said, he, he, he would never win with Chloe. But what happened really is that I think Rachel and Chloe drifted apart because of the drugs possibly because of not being able to run away together, which was the thing that connected them at the very beginning of Before the Storm. If that happened, then it's nothing unusual. People break up, people drift away from one another. We lose contact with some people, we never talk to them again. We don't really know when is the last time we're talking to someone. Except that I do think that there was still some feelings involved. I got this message today, this guy emailed me, he sent me this amazing theory of his. Uh, it was properly and well said, his name is Shimon. Basically he stated that he doesn't believe that Rachel broke up with Chloe and I have to say I agree. I don't think something like this happened, I don't think there was a moment when Rachel sat down with Chloe and told her, you know what Chloe, let's just stop seeing each other. I think it was sort of very natural that maybe Rachel started to hang out with Frank more because she knew that it was easier to hang out with him and with the drugs and stuff like this. It wasn't like that she stopped seeing Chloe at the same time. I strongly believe that they were still meant to run away together and here's why. When we see Chloe looking for Rachel in Life is Strange, she keeps saying we were meant to run away together. And when you saw, you know, the 17 missed phone calls thing by the end of Before the Storm.
you know that they obviously were still in touch. It's like you don't often really want to run away with your ex. That's just not something that would happen. This is why I also think they never actually broke up. It's just that they drifted apart from each other, maybe for the time being. Maybe they cared less. Maybe Rachel cared less. There's also Mr. Jefferson. It's harder to explain Mr. Jefferson, but it's like he was a photographer, she was a model, actress. Obviously, he promised her a better world and she probably bought it. She probably wanted to go someplace and be someone else. Hence the letter that uh, she wrote to Chloe. Maybe I'm being in denial. Maybe I'm just looking for approval for my own theory. I just believe that Rachel still cared for Chloe, even though Mr. Jefferson showed up. So like I said, we don't know what happened between Life is Strange and Life is Strange Before the Storm. I discussed this in my Amber Price Price Fit video. We only see little glimpses of someone else's life. And it's very easy to make poor judgment and say that she cheated, say that she was manipulated. When in fact we don't really know. Maybe she was doing this for the sake of Chloe. Maybe she was hanging out with Frank because Chloe had a debt with Frank. Maybe she wanted to get some money out of him or drugs. Mr. Jefferson, that's another deal. I mean, he probably promised her a vision of going away from um, Arcadia Bay and we know that that's the single thing that Rachel wanted the most. But it's like, I still believe that she's an amazing person. I really would love her to be still alive. I don't know, I hope that they realize, I mean, the developers, either Don't Not or uh, Deck Nine, that Rachel is too cool to get rid of her. It makes me very sad to think that I would never see her again. I really want to see her again in some sort of game. Max, would you please just go back in time and save Rachel? I really want her to do it. I know it's not reasonable, but I really wanted her to do it. So yeah, to sum up, I think that Rachel is manipulative. It's just she's not manipulative with Chloe. And if they drifted apart, maybe it's because Rachel believed she was doomed with her mother being a drug addict. Maybe she didn't even fight it. Maybe she felt ashamed. She knew that Chloe wouldn't allow her to go down that road. And she maybe felt that she had to. Overall, she's smart, funny, full of life like Sarah was. Being manipulative is not really a bad thing. I think most of us manipulate people in some ways. I mean, we're always looking out for our own needs. If you think about it, every friendship, every romantic relationship we have, it's always there's always something in it for us. I don't know, I might be making another video about Rachel, because I feel I haven't said it all. Remember to leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. There are new theories coming later on this week as well. Uh, new playthroughs and basically anything you want. If you have any ideas, if you want me to discuss anything, uh, let me know. As I said, links are in the description so you can always contact me. Thanks for watching this video. Let me know what you think about Rachel. This was Olaf from Stop New Channel.